Welcome to the Spiritual Forum, everyone. So glad you're here today. I have such an interesting guest today, uh, and I think you're going to love her. Uh, her name is Celine O'Donovan. She's a native of Galway City on the West Coast of Ireland. And alongside her successful international career in marketing, she pursued her lifelong interest in all things holistic, including energy healing and sound healing, Reiki and craniosacral therapy. It was only when breast cancer knocked at her door in 2016 that everything changed. A new path emerged in front of her and she was propelled in a new direction, a direction that she never could have found on her own. Celine recently published a book titled Gifts from the Devastation, What Cancer Taught Me About Life. She's also a qualified life coach and public speaker who's passionate about sharing her story of hope. And the spiritual form is all about stories of hope. So I'm really interested in hearing this one. Welcome, Celine. Thank you, Carol. Delighted to be here and really excited to be talking to you. Me too. All the way from the West Coast of Ireland. I know, <laughs> I know. And I just we're just gonna love hearing your voice. So the more you talk, the better. <laughs> Just slow me down if, if you can't understand the accent. We'll slow you down if you can't understand you. Um, so we'll we'll dig into your um, your book and all of that. But I thought it'd be good to start as I do with all my guests. But just tell me a little bit about your your path, your life, where you've where you've been, and how you got to where you are now. And your whole book is about that. So whatever you want to tell me about your your journey, let's just start off there. Okay, um, I suppose. The big moment for me was the day I was diagnosed with cancer. So I sort of talk about life pre-cancer and after cancer and how that sort of, I call it really, it was the start of a big awakening in me. I, I think, you know, we're awakening from the day we, we are born. I'm only uh, realizing that in the last few years. But just to paint a little bit of a picture, I suppose, of my life prior to that and what led to it. Um, in my understanding. So as I said, I, you introduced me there. I grew up in the West Coast of Ireland, quite a, a nice family, the middle child of three, went to school, went to college, worked in the sort of corporate world, worked in marketing in a bank. Um, I don't know, I suppose as a child, I always felt quite sensitive and emotionally overwhelmed by if I sort of connect back to being a very young child, I felt quite um I felt a lot of the emotion in my family you know it was a nice family but as with all families there's a lot of you know ancestral patterns and traumas and you know the conditioning we grew up in and as I was growing up I can see now what started to happen I started to shut down um emotionally it was like you know I I, I began to understand that it was safer for me not to express myself emotionally or to speak up too much. I felt a sense of being responsible for keeping people happy in my family and to do that because I needed to suppress who I was. Now, nobody said that to me and I'm sure intended that, but that was the message I picked up as a very young child. And I've only understood this since cancer. I didn't understand it at the time, but I'm sure many of us do that. And then we go into the systems of education and all the other social conditioning that we sort of pick up along the way again which I wasn't aware of so I went through my life probably quite disconnected I think is the only way I can describe it um, I had a number of I suppose pivotal moments in my life and painful moments but I think there were I can see now they were very important in getting me to where I am now and they were prior to cancer so I won't delve into all of them but let's say um, I had a marriage breakdown that was very traumatic in my early 30s. Um, my husband was gay and we're very strongly connected now. And we're so connected. We met for a very, very specific reason. I know that. Um, but that was a very traumatic period in my life about 20 years ago. And I sort of tumbled downwards and I you know, suffered with depression, addiction. I ran away. I did a Shirley Valentine in Greece for a year, <laughs> which looked so glamorous on the outside, but I was dying inside. But so I learned these survival skills that probably they weren't the most healthy. And I, yeah, through alcohol was my drug of choice and through work and just really suppressed and anesthetized myself 
as best I could to deal with the this pain that I really found. And I, I'm sure many of the listeners can identify this pain that I couldn't articulate and couldn't, um, I, I just couldn't even express it to people. The depths of it were beyond um, anything. Um, and I, it wasn't, I don't believe, down to the marriage breakup. I, you know, I think that was a trigger because I met someone there who was beautifully connected we connected at a very soul level so I and it was the first time I experienced that I really feel in my life so when that fell apart it was that separation again you know that sort of mm -hmm. separation I, I had separated from God from my divine source at a very young age now I can see and then I think there was a time when I sort of reconnected and then I was pulled apart again but it was all necessary so that's sort of my path I still function uh, functioned I still worked I still had a good career I still as we all do on the outside looked to a great life I lived in the capital in Dublin city then I moved back to the west coast of Ireland or where I'm from back to the to, to where I was born and I worked in the university there for many years um, supporting students, which I loved, you know, young students going traveling the, the country, supporting them. So again, I was still pushing down how I was feeling. I, I had to some degree dealt with some of my issues, but I was still very disconnected and I was very driven by the outer world and appearances and what I felt was expected of me. I was on the hamster wheel and mm. I didn't even realize it, you know, as, as we all are. And I was just in the system, in the system in the matrix however you want to call it and um, life continued and then I started to feel quite stressed in my job quite burnt out because it was like switching addictions you know I suddenly work shopping all these other things so I worked I worked I worked and, and the more I think craving the the acceptance that I had wanted all my life from my parents that by what they weren't maybe able to give me because they hadn't received in their own life the sense of work so I worked to work and then I had a car accident in 2014 I think 2012 sorry so I would have gone through that period of my life came back to Galway in 2005 got a job in the university 2012 which I think is quite a pivotal moment in our history I think the awakening was starting then a lot of things started to happen mm -hmm. at work I was faced with very toxic situations and relationships in my life everything was really coming up close um and I had a very quite a few narcissistic now I can see quite relationships in my life codependence that I had never really probably understood and then it led in 2014 to a car crash which I knew I hit a wall and I literally was hitting a wall in my life but mm. You know, I had a bit of a breakdown, I would say, for at the end of 2014, for about a month or two, I could feel it. I could feel this fizzing in my mind, in my head and I could hardly speak. But yet after a month, I felt, OK, what else do I do? Back on the hamster wheel again. I didn't know how to I didn't know how to extract myself and I didn't even know what I was extracting myself from. But something was saying this is enough and. But back I went again into the system, working harder, 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 harder until bang a year and a half later in February 2016, which I think is when many, many people I have met have had quite significant, let's say, big traumas in their life appear in 2016. And I, I know now it is to prepare me for this time on the planet now. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really comprehend that then, but I, it was an awakening in my own life. So. The interesting thing, so that sort of led yeah, to my diagnosis with cancer in, in February 2016. And I say to people, which is which is the truth and can sound strange to people, is the day I got that news, I found a lump. Again, I ignored it. Um, I was sitting up in bed one morning and I put it to one side. Not sure, really. Couldn't go there. Work, work, work. And eventually I said it to someone in work. And she said, it's probably just a cyst, you know, just go to your doctor. I knew it wasn't a cyst deep inside. I knew, I knew, mm -hmm. um, I just knew, I knew everything was about to change. And I had had a reading with someone only a month earlier, like just out of pure desperation to say, what's going on with my life. And she had said, your life is going to catapult in another direction. And I didn't know then, but just the knowingness that we all, when we are connected have, and I went to the doctor and 
quite quickly within a week let's say I went through all of the the usual tests and mammograms and everything and I got the diagnosis and once once I can remember the words and he just said the consultant said to me it'll be a year out of your life and I, I wrote it at the end of my book um I said it wasn't a year out of my life it was the year I started to live mm. um and it was the start of my life and the big the most um what would I say once I got through the shock the overwhelming feeling I had was of relief which might sound strange to people to say you've been diagnosed with cancer and you feel relieved but I wasn't relieved at the cancer I was relieved that I could stop because I knew um you know this couldn't continue so yeah that was the interesting yeah Yeah. the end of one life the start maybe the beginning yeah I I want to pause right here I know there's a lot more but sure but there was so much in that and and the first thing I want to kind of point out is that um I think that this disconnection from our feelings and um disconnecting from you know suppressing the feelings and our emotions I think a lot of people may think that's associated with people who have these massive traumas, but it, it's, we, we all, we all have it. You can, you can be in a good family. You can have, you know, a, a fair, pretty happy life and still experience this. I, I really can't be myself here. I really can't bring myself forward here. I, I need to assure that everybody around me is happy. Like that's my job. And so mm-hmm. I think it's really important to point out that because um, I, I know for me, that's really a little bit more like my life is. And and what's interesting is when I'm around people who have had like enormous trauma, like incest or mm. rape, you know, th- these horrible traumas, poverty. For me, I, I tend to go, well, you know, I, I, mm. I can't really speak about anything that happened in my life because nothing like that. And, and I, I think that's another suppression. It's another level of, I, I can't, my, my experience can't really be validated because it's, it's not big enough. It's not bad enough to bring forward. Yeah. So I wanted to highlight that because it's kind of sounded like it was your case as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very important for people to know that. I yeah. really believe that. And just I read just recently the book Edith Eager is the gift, you know, with a 92 year old lady who uh, was in Auschwitz and survived it. And she oh, said gosh. as a therapist, she said people do don't want to tell her like what you said. Like, I can't I can't compare myself to you. You were in Auschwitz and the concentration right. camps. And she's, you know, and she said it's nothing to do with it. You know, it's nothing to do with that. But each of us has a unique journey in this life we all have our own challenges this is what we I suppose that is the important thing to understand she said all I'm trying to do is share we get through them in the same way however you know you know and some challenges are easier for others to come through you know who knows it's it's but it's very interesting when she talks about her experience who's going to say right you know I, mean, you know, I, I can line up with that I know it's like I you know I, I I there's nothing for me to talk about you kind of feel guilty but yeah but we all have breaks in belonging we all have breaks in belonging we all have there's some sense of loss that we go from, you know, baby, we kind of come in innocent and, and, and eager and just re- ready for everything. And, and, and life just kind of happens, whether it's uh, intentionally abusive or there's just, you know, you're ignored or you're, you're laughed at or, you know, all these things that happen. Mm-hmm. And, and then mm-hmm. we end up suppressing. And I think we're going to get to the suppression of your emotions or your feelings had I mean, something to do with your diagnosis. Um, but before we get to that, Absolutely. there are a couple of things. Um, I thought I thought your description of the hamster wheel was interesting. Work, mm. work, work, work. Work is an addiction. Work is a mm. distraction. Work keeps mm-hmm. us from feeling. Mm-hmm. Work keeps us, we think we're creating and doing things and ca- taking mm-hmm. care of our family and we're doing these things. But <laughs> But we're not tending to ourselves. And we're just good at putting off, you know, some sort of inevitable. And then you ended up literally hitting a wall. 
I, I mean, know. how fascinating is that? I mean, like, <laughs> I like there's like not even a translation there. There's not I even know. a like, gosh, I wonder what that was about. <laughs> <I> <laughs> well, they real. I think God realized she's a little bit slow. We've been trying <laughs> for so long. I'm a slow learner. <laughs> so if I can Very just get her to learner. hit a wall, she can say I hit a wall. <laughs> yes. And then something might start to connect. Yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> it is interesting how spirit you know does that it, it, and it all it all seems like everything that you were doing was bringing yourself to this point mm -hmm. to you know having having hit a wall and and then the cancer is this new wall this this point where okay now you've got to pivot you know it's like something's something's going to change and everything that you kept doing to try to avoid that <laughs> it was like here it is it's going to show up this is how how god does yeah. it it's like here it is yeah. yeah and isn't the interesting thing the biggest i often say to people like what you can say well what shifted or changed i i have a very vivid memory of going through treatment which again is another side of it because i lived a very holistic life but it was my path i did it both holistically and i went through treatment and i needed to do that some people don't you know everybody has a different approach to how they deal with it but the interesting thing with me is I had a year of treatment of chemotherapy surgery radiotherapy and during that time everything shut down which is what had to happen to me because nothing else was working and I can see that now my body physically stopped my mind stopped because I couldn't stop it and the only way I was living alone and my house changed it's so interesting I used to like my house at all and something broke open. I just say to people, this is the only way I can describe it. it. There was a breaking open and a letting go. And you know how we are conditioned to and, and, and the ego and the personality to hold on and to do and to be and to fix. And I had tried all my life and really it's an undoing. This is what I was being shown. It's not a doing. It's an undoing and a peeling back and a so it had to get that bad for me. I remember driving in the car one day and I was going to some appointment and I was just, I can't do this anymore. And I literally took my hands off the steering wheel, steering wheel and just went, okay, take over. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. And that was when that breaking open, that sense of breaking open is the only way I can describe it happened. And my house changed. It's really interesting. The energy of the house, because I just came into this place of peace and love and harmony and calm and flow and joy and everything. My house got brighter and lighter. People used to say it, even though I was going through, you know, the most difficult physical treatment, but it was what needed to happen for me to understand, as you described there, the hamster wheel, the the addiction to that and the doing and I can fix it mm -hmm. when really it was about peeling back everything I see now that I'm not you know all of the things we talked about earlier as a child we pick up our traumas yeah. our, and you know what we pick up from our ancestors maybe our karma who knows and yeah. then all of the conditioning and programming and really it was about getting to the point where um so that was I think when you say to pivot that it I maybe didn't recognize it exactly at that moment, but I can see now that's when everything started to change. Yeah. Um, so it's like we spend a, yeah, we spend this, we spend our, our lifetime adding on, so we, we have this, this authentic self and then we just add all this stuff onto it, the social conditioning and everything. And then it's like, we're not even recognizable. Um, and so you're saying your process, your healing process was an undoing. Exactly. A releasing, a letting go, a peeling back of all those layers exactly. to get down to your essence. Yeah. And it's still, you know, we go through those experiences. I've had a lot, a lot of shit. It's, it's continuing. And I, I heard a beautiful analogy I because I found it hard to put words on. And we know the big shift is happening collectively. And, and I really feel and understand that's why. And I'm meeting a lot of people who have gone through their own big breakdowns and breakthroughs and breaking opens maybe five or six years ago to be ready for this time so they would because I don't know what I would do otherwise now um but I can understand that collectively now I think as in as well as individually and hope play some part and be of service but um 
each, even in the last, you know, there was a lot happening energetically. I heard a, a beautiful lady describe it as, you know, as the vibration and the frequency on the planet is rising as we're purging all of this stuff collectively and individually, the temperature, the frequency is rising. And as it, it, as it does, we have to peel off more layers because it keeps getting more uncomfortable. So it's sort of going deeper and deeper. And, you know, I, I had a conversation with a friend who's gone through something similar in a different way. It's like, when is this going to end? I'm on another, <laughs> I'm on another layer and this layer is even more painful. But I suppose we move I the thing I I feel and I know and I say to people is you know we're coming you know yes I'm I'm connected but I I, I you know to my to God but I you're you're still we've had years we've had a lifetime of this building up as you said all this layer so it takes time but you start to move through them faster that's what I've found and you 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 know how to do it and you 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 know you it it just becomes once you keep moving keep moving through it. It, it moves through you and what 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 what's remaining each time you let go of a layer is just more and more beautiful so isn't it it's just yeah that's the prize um not that I would I I, I don't think you I think I heard someone on your podcast saying you couldn't sell it to someone. <laughs> I don't think you can sell this path to anyone I think you just find it you know and you're ready right. it's, that's it's divinely true. isn't it it's divinely orchestrated and timed for each of us so I don't believe I don't want, you know, I used to be going out trying to convince and wake people up. I don't anymore, you know, because me neither. Yeah, you know, I did too. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Wake up. I've I've learned <laughs> that I've learned that the need to wake other people up is just an indication that you're not awake. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah. Exactly. It, the awake yeah. person doesn't need everybody to wake up. They just need to keep doing their own awakening. Uh, it's exactly. a it's an ego's trap that if, if mm. everybody just wakes up, then the world would be great. It's like uh uh-uh, uh that's not that's not the no. way it works yeah no so no. i kind of want to get more into your uh your healing but but i don't want to leave this idea this collective shift what do you think is happening mm. collectively well we're we're <laughs> i think we're freeing ourselves from um you know i talked about my individual hamster wheel we're fr- I mean, there's lots of ways you can go and dark places you can go with it. But I understand we're fleeing, freeing ourselves from the enslavement that we've been in for thousands of years and waking up to um, our divine, true, sovereign nature, our um, our God self. And um, yeah, that's that's what's. And unfortunately, I you know, and I'm sure many others have I went down the rabbit hole of the darkness for quite a while and I had to come up from there and I suppose there's layers of this isn't there um, yeah. and I've sort of shifted more now trying coming into my own um I suppose try as best I can inhabiting my own light and connecting to that and being my true authentic self because that's what's impacted on me I've had beautiful healers support me and none of them they were just I had a beautiful woman a spiritual midwife she that's how she describes herself and she is who I met not by accident going through cancer and she and I see it now it's like the birthing pains isn't it when you start to look at it it's sort of the contractions the letting go the releasing it's the pain the discomfort and it's happening on a collective basis what I'm going through and then it's it's um awakening to the shadow the, the the darkness that is within us all and the darkness in the world and yes, freeing ourselves yeah. from that and we have to see it don't we you know I, yeah, I completely agree it's like that going down the rabbit hole mm-hmm. I've gone down the rabbit hole and I've come <laughs> up and I've gone back down I've gone <laughs> up and but it's it's so for at least for me it's essential yeah. it's essential for me to uncover the layers of of the matrix that you mentioned before like yeah. Yeah. To, to see what That's is it. real and then yeah. you see what's real and then you and then you can be with that but mm. but all this the, our, every structure that we're in is or, or the way we live is within these structures that are all these layers of like you said enslavement yeah <laughs> and, yeah and we don't even see it and then yeah. when you do see it it's like oh my gosh yeah. look at that and then when to grab people and say do you see that yeah you see that? i know and they're like what <laughs> no what are you talking about oh, there's something wrong with you yeah. 
So then that's I, a difficult yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do that anymore. Well, I don't do that anymore. I, I wait for somebody to say, "Do you see that?" And I go, "Yeah, mm, I see that." <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Um, but anyway, that there is something. There is something okay about going down the rabbit hole, going mm. into that darkness. There's, that's mm. part of the path. Yeah. It's part of the path yeah. of seeing. Yeah. What 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 is real and then and then you don't even know if that's real maybe another layer is real maybe another layer is real because the rabbit hole can go deep and and but ultimately you anchor yourself in the light and mm. ultimately you anchor yourself in in for me faith in god mm. spirit the divine yeah. because yeah. we're we're evolving to becoming a divine being so we mm. are divine beings but we're mm. evolving to awakening to that to, mm. to seeing mm. this is the truth mm. of our being because the truth mm. of our being doesn't need all this um masters <laughs> we yeah. don't need a lot of people yeah. telling us how to live the divine yeah. being is is very clearly listening to guidance and we know mm. we don't need anything out there to tell us mm. and so mm. we know um, and it, and sorry, just on that note, isn't it no accident when we talk about the hamster wheel that there is a concerted effort to keep us on it? Oh yeah, and afraid, and you know, because once you're caught up, as I was, like all of us are, then you there's no space to sort of yeah awaken to that uh, to plug out. Like I was plugged out, thanks, because I couldn't plug myself out. I was plugged out through cancer. And then I plugged in inside. And that's why I talked about the insight was my way of sort of understanding it is I've basically, yeah, plugged out of the matrix and plugged into God and plugged into me. Yeah. And, um, and then you're wearing different goggles, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, exactly. Should... The world is very different. Mm. So let's talk about or... what plugging into you looked mm. like. Mm. How, how did that? I... Well, it's a gradual process and it's unfolding I mean I don't claim to have all the answers and and, and I just an interesting the process of plugging into myself I talked about that breaking open and, and there's another great book which I didn't read because I didn't need to because the title says it all it's the hamster wheel isn't motorized motorized <laughs> and I just thought okay I don't need to read this uh, that says it all <laughs> we do a this to of ourselves truth. <laughs> exactly we do this to ourselves so I was luckily and gratefully I'm grateful that I was taken off the hamster wheel I had that breaking open and through that connection to you know to God to the divine and that 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 unfolding a, a beautiful spiritual teacher I found I found Manny who's a man called Muji he lives in Portugal I think he is the retreat center there and um he um talks about you know once once you plug in and once you find that place in the stillness it it it, it does the work for you you don't have to do anything it, i've noticed that there's just been this expansion and unfolding it's like you you take a match and you light the match that's all you have to do once it takes hold it will it will of its own accord expand within you and unfold. and that's what i'm finding I've nothing to do I've nothing to do it's just um I mean obviously there is the inner work and in clearing out the trauma because I think the trauma is the other aspect of the enslavement because the more we're kept in our this is what I found in myself I had so much unresolved and unfelt emotion that I was so afraid to go near I couldn't sit still I couldn't be in the silence so I was it, it was sort of taken from me but I still had to continue on then and do the work after that once it was started um and that that is the key I think for me one one I've done a huge amount of I think you mentioned some of the healing work I'd always been dabbling in healing work all my life but I didn't know but obviously everything happens at the right time and nothing is wasted I, I know no experience is wasted so it was happening to prepare me for now because I couldn't understand why can't I make this work in my life why am not I going out healing and doing this work but it's sort of now because I wasn't ready I wasn't ready so now as I'm sort of it, but it's helped me understand and not be afraid of working with clearing out this trauma. And as I've started to do a lot of healing work in the last few years, then I have been able to sit with myself. It has been OK to go into the stillness and the silence. I think most of us, that's what keeps us captive is we don't know how to go there because all we feel is pain when we sit with ourselves. Mm. And I totally understand it because I ran from it for years. I was afraid, you know, and I, I'm I'm really passionate about I know we can't 
tell anyone, but if someone comes to me to go, you know, it you it, we can fear we'll get lost in it and we'll never come out. So, you know, I'm a big believer in, and that's sort of some of the work I do now, helping people move through it, you know, and allow it to allow it. The more we suppress, that's what my illness was. It was suppression, suppression of my my power, my energy, my source, my creativity, who I am. And all of that then, it, you know, becomes very, very painful. But it's just energy that wants to move. That's what I've learned to, under, to understand. Yeah. It's, that's all it wants. It doesn't want to stay. It, it's it's uncomfortable there too. It, it's, it wants to leave. Right. It's, like it, its natural yeah. state is yeah. movement. Exactly. And, and we're even just, grab onto yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been one big part, huge part of my work and continues to be, but I'm not afraid of it. I sort of dive into it now. I really do. I, I can feel it sort of, it's, I can feel that nearly transmutation that's sort of happening, that alchemy as it sort of shifts. I really physically feel it now. It's, it's amazing. Um, but that was, that's key. I think it's very difficult to access your intuition, your creativity, all of that really good stuff, your purpose, your joy, what's important to you, what makes you tick. It's very difficult if you're full to the brim with unresolved and, and, and stuck, you know, stuck energy. Because yeah. And, and a lot of people are stopped. I don't know what my purpose mm -hmm. is. I don't know mm -hmm. what I should be doing. I remember really being in that place a lot. I went, when I was on the hamster wheel, I remember mm. thinking I, uh, I worked for a, a large um, uh, energy company for like 20 years, but I couldn't really envision what else could I do? What else mm. could I do? And it was because mm. I was so trained, you know, I went to college, I got my degree, I got my jobs, making money, you know, I was doing well, I had family, everything was good, but it was like, I wasn't, that wasn't really what I wanted to do, but I couldn't even conceive. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like I even knew. And so, mm. so that's the blocking, you know, that not knowing what is my purpose or what is, mm. what is mine to do? Um, what you're saying is it's, it's energy blocked within us that we need to free up before we yeah. can access those things. Yeah. And then it becomes a flow. This is what I have yeah. found. And it feels a very natural state for me is to be living in flow because I heard again another description about you know your purpose and dharma and apart from what you do it's who, who are you being like who are you being in every moment and that has shown me because it's shifting all the time like every time I think I oh I'm an author now I've read, not that I was I wasn't even going to, I'd never written anything that was just I was guided like I mean it's just miraculous I could talk all day about all the synchronicities and the guidance of the people and everything but I was ready and I was listening and then it is that flow like I just hand everything over now I don't I've ended up sort of in back sort of people have come to me for healing work and I'm really going I don't know why are you coming to me <laughs> well, what do you want me to do and um, I've been sent the most beautiful people who just you know from hearing me in an interview or about my book and now it's evolved I started doing going back to Reiki I did sound healing years ago with beautiful Tibetan bowls, bowls yeah and um it's sort of become just this blend I said to the person look if you want to come I'm really happy just to play the bowls and it'll be nice and relaxing but then this really strong intuitive guidance started coming through for the person and I was I remember in the first session I was is that me is that what's going on? and then I realized I later I so what I was guided to do maybe from the writing is to write to them after it just this is what happened because I was doing some remote sessions with people and it was the energy I just was as powerful if not more and I found I was writing to them and I said look this may mean nothing to you but I just have to say it because it's coming through me and then that started to no 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 that makes total sense my gosh how did you know that and I'm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I love that way of, you know, and I think that's what prevents a lot of us because, you know, we want a label or a title or I'm this or I'm, but life isn't that. Life is, as you said, the flow of energy. You know, we're, 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 we're sparks of God, you know, which is just this beautiful energy in motion. Like, how can you box it into? Right. Well, all anything? of our titles, every title we take is is a demotion in a way. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, you know, we're, we're divine sons yeah. and daughters. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I don't like titles, even yeah. life coach. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm nobody's life coach. But it's helped me to do that. And I've done all of these things because obviously at some point, 
they will make sense and they will be of use. But once we try to label or to isn't it to 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 catch something and yeah into a you know it's catch, yeah it's, it's like putting it's, the firefly in a jar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. you can't can't go out and fly and, and bring light everywhere. And now he's stuck in here. Yeah. yeah, our labels. It's it's a very strange thing that we do culturally. Yeah. Um and I even yeah. go ahead. Go Sorry, ahead. no, no, no. It's I suppose it's the fear as well, isn't it? Because we've just been it's all that separation, you know, the 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 fear keeps us okay. Well then if I do this and I am this, then okay, I'm I'm okay in terms of how the world looks at me. Yeah. Because, isn't it, you know? Um and, and I'm now so grateful because I genuinely don't fear anything. I, I really don't. De death, I mean, there is no death, but like it, it's a very liberating place to get to when you realize, as you said, it's all in the loop, you know, it's, and I know that sounds very sort of maybe very easy to say, but at different stages, you start, start to see it, don't you, in your own life? Like, what, what is the worst thing that could happen? I faced death and you know it was and you know I faced the possibility of death right right you know right. I didn't face death I mean and there were but at the same time who knows who knew it had gone into my lymph node so I can remember postponing treatment and the consultant saying you know it's gone into your lymph nodes and you know and a part of me still thought well if I meant to go I meant to go right <laughs> right I know it's a funny thing if hard if, to describe isn't yeah it? it's just... I kind of felt that way with COVID and I don't want to get into that too much because yeah. I know it's very divisive but yeah. I always thought that you know whatever happens is meant to happen you know yeah. if this is the way I'm going to go out this is the way I'm going to go out if I'm yeah. going to you know run my car into a wall <laughs> that's the way I'm going to go yeah. that's the way I'm going to go out yeah I can't control those things I can't yeah I can't like I cannot uh run away from every aspect that how death can find me because it, that date's going to mm. come sometime and whatever yeah. it is, we need to surrender to it. Yeah. And even without going in, I don't necessarily into the COVID thing again, but I, I think with all of this, because none of us, every time you think you know something, you don't know something. Right. What's shown me is the importance of love and compassion at the end of the day. This is what all of this is about and the unity and, you know, all of the separation for different reasons down through the years has always been this and that, that sort of divide and conquer mm -hmm. and it's really this is the journey like I've you know it's taken me a long time I've been very slow over the last few years just to remember it's about going within Celine and I didn't I say to people it's you know wherever we ended up in the last few years is where we needed to be and I ended up back with my mother who's 91 and it's like I went full circle to fully and I really feel it's been such a gift. And I know a lot of people who have ended up back with their parents, maybe elderly parents. And the healing that's taking place is just is oh, such interesting. A gift, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a huge yeah. healing. I, yeah, I, I mean, back, yeah. as you talk about that, mine was kind of the opposite. My my oh. last living parent died right before COVID, uh, just uh, January 30th. And I felt, even though I was a grown woman, I felt orphaned. So mm. I was going into mm. the whole COVID thing orphaned. Um, mm. And I, that's mm. an extreme statement because it wasn't like I was a child. And, my, you know, I'm a grown person. I had parents there my whole life. He was 96 and it's not, it's, you know, but there's it's something about, yeah, yeah, there's something about now I have no parents mm. and there's kind of a, you know, you're kind of looking for your handholds there. And I have siblings and, and, and all, and I, uh, but but it go, you know, it's interesting. I, I have mm. to really look at this because going mm. into COVID, which was such a discombobulation and a kind of a, a kind of a um, forced trauma on yeah. all of us. Yeah. Um, I, I was go, I, I, I was going into that in kind of a weekend state, and I really hadn't thought about that until you just said that you're back with your mm. mom. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting, and I mean, I can't say everybody, I suppose, could only make for it for themselves what it is, but I've, I've just. It's, it's really because we often didn't see eye to eye. So, it's, right. But now I just feel pure love for her and acceptance. And it's what I needed to learn, you know, self-acceptance, but acceptance of, you know, her. I, I just see her as she is in this, the device, isn't it? it it's, it's ultimately, if you're waking up to the divine in yourself, well, then ultimately, hopefully you're, you're starting to see the divine in others. And right. you can recognize that, you know, that meeting, that's, we talked before the interview about animals. I find that now when I'm meeting animals, I'm 
I'm seeing them seeing me and I'm seeing that aspect of them. It's so interesting. It's just when you start to connect from that deeper level. Right. Put, pe put people who are there too. You don't no words are needed. You just it's um, and that's why a lot of the remote and distance work I'm doing is even sort of I think that's been another great gift of this time to see how powerful we are. You know, when we when we're really truly connected to the divine, there's no there's no time space limits at all. Right. Like, yeah. isn't it? It's just there's it's so many important. aspects. Yeah, I mean, it's very it's, important it's, to be yeah. to stay connected. Now, I mean, yeah. there is a time where we're all kind of dividing, and still people are dividing. There's yeah. nothing more important now than yeah. to connect. Exactly, to connect to stay connected, even if you see reality completely differently, even if mm. your daughters, mothers, fathers. Mm siblings mm. see yeah. reality completely different from you if you can stay connected find a way to stay connected and 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 be in love with them see them see the their divine self um because the division yeah. is um it's contrived it is exactly <laughs> and we don't have to yeah. play that game we don't have no, to play that game no. we'll we'll really regret it yeah yeah because when you know who you are and i'm not saying you know like we're we're still human beings living you know a physical life as well so we're going to have what goes with that i have still a lot of things to <laughs> to shed but at the same time i do know when i catch myself going off into sort of that separation and right and wrong I know that when I come back into connection with myself, there's only love and oneness. So all of that contrived division, this is the spiritual war as a friend of mine calls it, because that is what it is. Yes. You know? Yeah. And it's, you know, and, it, it, I, and we all will at some point, who's to say when, like a very, someone did say to me once, which I found, I know we're going off the point a little bit, but just it is sort of connected. But, you know, this idea of, you know, we've each chosen as a spark of the divine, a very individual journey. And who am I to try and interfere with someone else's journey? Right. They're awakening or not awakening or whatever it is. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm still yeah. learning that. <laughs> oh, it's not an easy one. But is it? I'm still learning that. Especially me too. when it comes to me children, too. it's like, ah. Oh yeah, uh, I don't have that. I'm just me, and it's still hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, just wait till you get your rescue dog. Oh my god, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> I look um, forward to. So, where do you want to go with this? I I do want to talk about your um your living inside out model that you created that's in the end of your book because I think it's a really useful tool, um, mm -hmm. for people to do kind of a self assessment. Um, yeah. But there's other things that we can talk about too. Life, life happening for you, not to you. That's really an mm -hmm. important point. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was wondering if, did you ever feel victimized at all? Like when you got the diagnosis, did you feel victim? Did you go through a period of time where you felt victimized? No, but I okay. probably had spent a lot of my life prior to that being okay. victimized. Okay. You know, I don't know, but for some reason, no, no. Yeah, and for maybe, some reason you knew it was a message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got a lot of them and I probably yeah. had been in that mode and I often look to others and how have they this life and I, I can't get there, but it was sort of self-perpetuating by being in this victim mode. No, it was grace. Grace is the only word I can use for okay. that took over. Um, there's nothing, you know, sometimes we can't put words on these things. I am just so grateful that God, that divine greater power took over and said, we have to get her out of the driving seat for a while because... <laughs> She's a Take bad driver. <laughs> Take the wheel. She does not deserve a license <laughs> to be in the world the way she's the way she's driving. So yeah, you know, someone else might get it a lot faster than me. And you know, you see beautiful young people. I see beautiful young people go, my God, look at where they are now. It's taken me all these years. But um, every single you know, no experience is wasted. I think it was Wayne Dyer said that he wrote a book I can see clearly now yeah. in his seventies, and I thought that was beautiful. That really helped me, and I just knew it. It was at the age of forty-seven when I was diagnosed. Okay, now I sort of get it. I was starting to get it. This is why I'm here. This is what life made sense to me for the first time ever. Which again might sound strange. Life never made sense to me. I found it this world hard I found like many I'm sure but you know I was particularly sensitive I covered it up like we all cover up and wear our masks and yeah. um, but I've, I I so this tool sorry I might be going off was 
I, as I did train as a life coach, but also at the same time, organically, these things were shifting in me. And I found, OK, this what is what seems to be if I'm to try and put it into some sort of useful, practical tool or form. This these are the things that have shifted in me and that I, I focus on and are helping me because fine to wake up but and go, OK, um. Yes, I found my connection to God. We're still living in this world and this matrix and this system, whatever you want to call it. So how do you and the transition? And I think for many people, that's what I found. A lot of women who've reached out to me are often people not just who've gone through cancer, but who've gone through something difficult and they're transitioning. They know they can't go back. And I always say and I uh, is that that was the most difficult time for me it wasn't cancer at all because I was taken out of the system and nobody expected me to be in it or to function in that way so I was allowed to just be and explore and connect with myself but it was the aftermath you know many people were oh I'm presuming I was going back into where I came from and I was looking at them going how that's what made me sick how do you think I could go back there yeah but, you know how could anyone else understand but I just knew I couldn't but I didn't know what lay ahead so that was you know going into the void and trusting and taking that leap of faith I worked with a very beautiful spiritual astrologer at one stage as well and he talked about I think it's one of the Indiana Jones films Okay. Where Sean Connery, I think Harrison Ford has to take it to save his father. Sean Connery has to get some remedy. Oh, it's but the leap of faith. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So he was describing it to me because I was going to him going, oh, tell me what lies ahead in the next year because I don't know what to do. Now, I had started writing and I'd been guided and I'd been sent people, beautiful people. I started doing the Artist Way course, um, but I was I was willing and I suppose anyone coming through anything I, I just go down on my knees now every day and every time I just hand it over and show me show me the way show me what's next you know and really tune into that that voice but all of those steps in that inside out living indicator nearly they are for me what helped me work my way through that I can talk about it now but I had no idea when I was in it you know, so when when you do the trauma work and you clear and you continue to do that, it becomes easier to sit with yourself. Then you can start to hear this voice that you probably didn't even know what it was. You can tune into your energy. You can feel genuinely your natural frequency and state, not the sort of agitated trauma that you're connected with. You start to feel and you start, you know, and it's I always say to people, I to practice on small things like practice on. If you're afraid to make a huge life decision, maybe just say, OK, I'm going to see what maybe color shoes I should buy or I don't know, something <laughs> not too important or what I should eat for my dinner and just start, list, you know, tuning in, you know, so then the intuition. And then when you're in that state, that's when my creativity starts to come online. You know, I, had, I thought creativity it was very interesting. I was in an office with an artist before I got sick and it was like it was put in my face. And I was really resentful of her. But this was another thing showing up saying, you know, you're suppressing this aspect of yourself. I just thought creativity was for certain people. I, I didn't <laughs> know it's who we are. This is who we are. We are creative at our source. So that then that starts to sort of all these beautiful little gifts start to to come in. And I did a lot of work, as I said, on the life coaching course. So, you know, this tuning into um you know what is it that makes you happy you know what is it that you enjoy doing the artist way book is a beautiful book i'd recommend as well to a lot of people as well as mine but um <laughs> lots of you know there's lots there's lots of two but i that's what i i hope people get it's not just about the book i'm not you know the book is just for me what i needed to write and i just hope it helps somebody but I'm not, you know you know people who need to read it will read it and that's it will find the right people um, but I wanted it to be practical as well. Um, so, yeah, people, sorry, I'm probably going off a little bit here, but basically it's like a wheel of life that people do in coaching. So you're, you're marking where you see you are, where you are today on all of these aspects that I've marked out. Like I said, the emotional ease, gratitude, your values, your purpose, your self-care, your belief system. So where you feel you are. And then that gives you and you mark it out of 10. 
So if you think of it as a wheel, it's probably you're probably not going to be 10 out of 10 on everything. I'm definitely not still, but it gives you that sense of, you know, coming more into alignment. So where maybe do I really need to focus first? And, you know, that's what I work with sort of intuitively with people, I find, because isn't it at the end of the day, I don't have the answers for anyone else. Everything I do now is to help guide and maybe point people to what I found in myself and to help show them the way to find it in themselves. I don't have anyone else's answers. None of us do. Right. And isn't that the most empowering thing we can do for each other is um, I just feel my life story, like everybody's beautiful, amazing life story. Um, maybe sharing that can help someone else, you know, see how they might navigate their own life or, you know, where they're at, because people who were, I wouldn't say a few steps ahead of me, helped me, sort of, they lit the way ahead for me, so hopefully I can light the way ahead for somebody else, and right. that's what we all do, isn't it, we do, we do it together. Yeah, um, and I do think, I do think finding somebody who's just a few steps ahead of you yeah. is, a, is a good thing to do, sometimes we're looking for that person who's already completely enlightened, and it's like, oh, the, the, the yeah. distance seems so far, uh, and and yeah. we're, we're all just a few steps ahead of somebody else and somebody else is a few steps ahead of somebody else. And so we really can all help each other, you know, exactly climb. Like taking yeah. each other's hand. Isn't right. Somebody took my hand. It was something I want to take. And I found those people are finding me. I haven't gone looking for anyone, you know, just people have turned up and they happen to be something's not right in my life. I'm feeling, you know, I've gone through something like a marriage breakdown or some devastation. It doesn't have to be cancer. It can be anything. That's why I called it Gifts from the Yeah, I wanted to point that Cancers. out because the, the book yeah. is called Gifts mm. from the Devastation. So it's not just about cancer survivor. Your your story, that's your story. But many of us experience devastation in, one of them. in lots of different ways. Yes. It's one of yours. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yes. And many, of, we all experience many of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. more are probably yeah. coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we're better equipped isn't it this is right. the, this is the the play if you want to call it sometimes it doesn't feel like a play or the movie whatever people call it the play of life is that you know I just I have the strongest memory nearly or sense now of sort of dropping in knowing I would forget everything and I, I talk about it with my ex-husband because we know that we were sort of decided to come in and do this together and we literally jumped in and went and I, I joke and say to him I shouted after him because he was born before me remember we're not meant to get married <laughs> <laughs> and then that he he didn't hear me because he went a year before me um, so then we go into the into the amnesia and it's, you know, what we've designed. And, you know, some people are meant to be with us. I think we, I know he's on his awakening path, which is different to mine. But we just I know that that we chose to support each other through it because we did pick quite painful. We all pick have some pain. But yeah, you know, and, and isn't it then when you start to awaken to that, even though someone said you don't know that we're ever awake in this lifetime, we're constantly awakening to the next, to the next. Right. Aren't it? Right. You know, you never know once you realize you know nothing or you don't know. It's probably the best place to be. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I, I know mm. but people who think that they're awake. Uh, I, I you might I, I mentioned this, I think, uh, a couple of podcasts ago, I my my prayer, regular prayer is, you know, God, show me what I can't see yet. I want to see mm. what I can't see yet. And, Beautiful. and I know that uh, there's only so much that I can be shown. I know that if everything was shown to me, I wouldn't be able to see it. And, you know, it's mm. just like, cause I'm not there yet. So it's kind of an incremental thing, you know, I'll be shown this and then my awakening happens in this way. And then, oh, now I may be ready for this over here. And then mm. there may be a lull and I'm, I, I'm still praying, you know, show me what I can't see, show me what I can't see. And it's like, I could fool myself and go, well, I guess I see it all because I'm not being shown anything, but that's a trap. <laughs> None yeah. of us can yeah. see that's all beautiful. of it. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 And aren't you, you're given these times of sort of to integrate because if we got whatever it all, we'd probably explode. Right. We were and probably said, not. We wouldn't be able yeah, we'd be dead. Like it'd just be too much. There'd be an electrical circuit blown out or something. Right. Um, and every time I think it's even, isn't it? And even these last few years have been such a big lesson for me because I did go into the division at the beginning. I didn't mean to, but I did. And I did go into the separation and I did go into the judgment. And I clicked with me at some point. I don't know when. 
ah, this is about, you know, unity. This is about love. This is about compassion. This is how we win this war, for want of a better word. We come back. And I started, it's amazing. I could see it. This is, I'm upstairs and my mother's off and downstairs in the house and we'd meet in the middle on the stairs. And I was going, my God, now I can look at her more with compassion and love. Like who's to say I picked the better path or I picked, you know, and, and that's the awake, isn't it? That is it. It's not in the big, you know, it's it, it's in your own home. It's in your own life. Like, isn't it? They say you grow where you're planted. Yes. You grow somewhere else. So I was planted here. Yes. And even though at times I didn't want to be here. <laughs> I wanted to run. Um, and here you are. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's wasn't it. Wherever you go, there you are. Yeah, <laughs> this is what they say. <laughs> All these beautiful. Yeah, and you know the 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 judgment and the separation and all that's that's just kind of succumbing to you know quote the darkness and we, but we're light yeah. you know as you said you're like we're we're like sparkles yeah. we're like god sparkles yeah. so yeah the the way we transform Ooh. the world is just by being our light yeah and the work that you've done clearing out all those layers and so your light shines you know your light now is is like on a hill, you know, like, uh, what did uh, Jesus say? You know, don't, don't put your light under a, a bushel mm, basket, mm, put it on top mm, of the hill, mm. show, show everyone, be a beacon on the top of the hill. And it sounds like mm. that's where you've come to at your, at this point in your life. Well, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> and like everybody, isn't it, you know, it, it sort of shows up in a mirror in our lives, doesn't it? So when you, when I just started to see more love and light and beauty in my life and like that beautiful dog, you know, that I might have been afraid of before or something, you know, I, I, I have such reverence and respect for animals now. I just think they're the most amazing. But I was so just, you know, when you're so disconnected from yourself, it's it's amazing. It's 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 sort of a gauge of your journey. Now I'm just like in awe of them and of nature. And yes, it's because they are the example. They don't have all the conditioning, and nature doesn't. So they are our greatest teachers. I'm saying, you know, they are in their truest form, which is yeah. where I'm. Go, you know, where where they are still shedding the layers. You know, it's uh, right. They're they're their authentic selves, and yeah. I um everybody who listens or in my community, they they know I'm an animal advocate. And I do think that when you look out in the world and you see the way we culturally treat animals, I mean, we are vicious, you know, in our exploitation, talk about slavery and cruelty. And it's just, it's just an indicator. It shows us how disconnected we are. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's something mm -hmm. that, that shows, oh, we're, look how disconnected we are because mm -hmm. we can't see that being, we can't see them as God or as an yeah. expression of God. Yeah. And so yeah. we dominate and we do this with uh, uh, low privileged people and animals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, it's just an indication of where we are culturally. And, and this whole awakening, I, I just love how you describe once you really connect to God, the divine, your divine self, then it's like, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. I love that you're connecting with animals. It's such a really, mm -hmm. it's a really, really good, um, out picturing of your your inner um yeah the light. movie's beginning yeah. to change <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe yeah. i'm playing it but it's isn't it it's a beautiful um you know just to keep reminding when i whatever i'm seeing you know i've had my issues and i've had i've one of the things again on that on that um tool that i have i talk about boundaries which i won't go into here but that's been a huge challenge for me and so i haven't always been seeing in the last years nice situations in my life and i've just been at a loss but i i know there's something in that it's showing up again for me at a at a at even closer and a more um not extreme way i don't know how to describe it maybe because i'm ready um but yeah so as well as the good showing up there's also okay this is something you need to let go and it's not about the other person there's something here that you're still you know um holding on to and it, it it's it's probably a lack I, uh, you know it, it's yeah it's work in progress anyways but, work in uh, progress yeah work in progress well i will uh i will include in the show notes i will include your um uh, living inside out model. If you have a visual of that, Thank I can, you. I can yeah. put that on the web page, yeah, but I'll just, I'll just list them here. The, the different facets, inner space, intuition, creativity, beliefs, appreciation, boundaries, emotional ease, and value. Is that 
correct? Values and, uh, purpose and purpose. Values and purpose. Oh, yeah. That's the, <laughs> it, yeah. It's on the second page. Them. I don't know. Purpo purpose purpose and self-care. <laughs> yeah. It, it yeah. put it on two yeah. pages for There's me. probably more, yeah. but these are what have really shifted, helped me. Right. Um, so this is yeah. your experience that you're sharing. Yeah. And and I love, and I'll, I'll put a, a, a picture of that on, on the website so that people can see how kind of kind of do their own little assessment and um the other thing i'll include is um that video of the leap of faith that you mentioned yeah. um, from raiders of yeah. the lost ark when i was yeah. doing church i used that video clip several times really? when, I was, when i was preaching when i was doing my my sermons wow. i used to do video clips all the time but i wow. love that one because it's yeah. just it's such a wonderful depiction of how terrifying it feels to step out into an abyss, not knowing what's going to happen, mm. not knowing anything and knowing that you could just fall mm. in a terrible, terrible way, terrifying way. And then, and then a stone or a, a, mm. a That's in the stairs. Well, something, something is put uh, laid before him. So like a step or, you know, and yeah. so he's able to make his step for, across an abyss because it just yeah. shows up for him. And that is how God works. Mm. And that is how faith works. Mm. It, mm. And it is, it mm. is <laughs> it's such a yeah. release. It's like, okay, yeah. I'm going off now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and once you do that, that's what I found with cancer was I had no choice at the time I let go. And I can just remember this feeling of being held. It was so hard. It's so hard to put words on, but once you taste it, and even though the fear can come up again in different ways, but once you taste that, you can't untaste it. You just know, like I just know, um, you know, some things have come up for me recently and I have to pull myself out of them because I can get lost in it and come back and try and observe and go, here we go again, you know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the lesson again and let go, let go, let God, as they say, and trust. And it, you know, it's, it's, I love telling these stories to people because they are real and it's, you know, you are always once once you just take that leap, you are always held. Always. Yeah. I, I've no experience what I hasn't been. It doesn't mean you get what you you the person always wants, but you get what's what's for your highest good and will bring you the greatest joy. Right. Ultimately, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. talking. I, it's actually fairly rare that I have a conversation about faith with people. Um, yeah, so, and it's a word. Sorry, it's lovely to talk to you as well because I think that's been another a friend of mine, uh, an amazing guy I met. She said, you know, part of this spiritual war that has been going on for so many years is through some religion i'm not against religion or anything but it's just some religions have caused people to turn away from god this has been part of the programming so that if you mention the word god people straight away go oh, no, right. I'm not going there i know my church so, but that's all part of it that plan isn't it so he is on a mission to get to that we start saying God because people nearly are afraid to use that word. Anymore. It is. It's amazing. They'll say the universe. They'll say, <laughs> and I was afraid too because I didn't want to turn people off, which is a terrible thing to say. But it's part of that process of growth in myself. And I talked to my nephew about this when we were driving out to see the dog. I said, "What do you think God is?" And it was lovely because. You, you could talk in a much freer and more open way. I said, you don't think you don't think it's someone judgmental shouting down at you. And, and this is what we're here. This is my passion, too, is to remind people we're, you know, we're all we're all God. Right. Right. It's, we're an it's, aspect. it's strange that that word is so yeah. much of a trigger for so many people. Yeah. So for me, I often say, and you'll see it in my writing, God slash source slash spirit yes, slash yes. great mystery. I do it too. <laughs> whatever Every, but, whatever yeah. you want to call it, I yeah. call it God. Whatever you but want to call been it. That's the word, fine. yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We all, I hear it with everybody, but that is, I heard someone say it, and I do believe it's the truth has been the work of the dark side or the, whatever you want to yeah. call it, or the systems, the yeah. control, because as long as you know we see it like that, they you know the the greatest um what would I say threat to them is us reconnecting absolutely with our God spark right nothing can stop you I don't fear anything now I don't fear anyone anything and that I was the total opposite I was afraid of everything and everyone all my life so it is you know yeah <laughs> there's a reason why um, we're not being encouraged to connect with god for sure so yes i would say to people give it a go if you don't like it you can disconnect 
but I doubt you'll find that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. I think that's a good yeah. note to close yeah. on. Give it a go. Yeah. Give it a go. Give it a go. Yeah. Um, so I do want to close, but do you have any last last words you want to say that you didn't get a chance to say? I just want to make sure I give you that opportunity. Thank you. Not, not really, other than that reminder to people, just if you are a spark of the divine, every one of us is, and your only job here, as I'm still learning, is to shine your light, like you said, as brightly as you can, because nobody can else can shine your light. We are each so unique and we're needed. We're essential. I wrote another book, it's fiction called The Tapestry of Life. I won't go on about that, but just that's that point that we are all needed. Each of us makes up this unique uh, tapestry that is life. So shine your light and know that you have everything you need within. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And Celine, I'll have on the podcast page, I'll have all the links to your books and your page and everything. So people can, can find you Thank there. You. Thank so, you. I have yeah. a mailing list too. So if anyone wants to, to check that out. And okay. Connect, I'd be delighted too. All right. Well, thank, thank you so much you. for being with me today. It thank was really so a pleasure. Much. Yeah. So, I and, loved and it. thank you so much, Reverend. Yeah, uh, it was really great. <laughs> Thank you. So, and I now close the spiritual forum. <laughs>